Rainbow Reflections, Book 1, A Kind of Magic, Chapter 28, Fight from the Inside. Sorala hurried to the mirror pieces lying on the ground. She stomped on the glass, kicking the tiny shards all over the place. But it was too late. The spirits, or whatever they were, were still in the room, and they gazed upon her with hatred. Stop what you're doing! shrieked one of the figures, which looked like a large pumpkin with legs and antlers. It doesn't matter, another creature growled, this one with the appearance of a tiger. It flicked its club tail, smashing into C3's bed. We won't need the mare any longer. We're finally in the school, and that's all that matters. Sorella's heart was beating more rapidly than at any other point in her life. So these were spirits? These odd-looking creatures that just came out of the mirror? How is that possible? And why did there have to be a tiger, the very same creature that had stalked her in the jungle only months before? She still had nightmares about that. Humans, stay here, the tiger spirit commanded. Ren raised her hand shakily, as if they were in class. Um, spirit, what's going on? Is there anything we can help you with? Sorala could have gladly knocked Ren out to make her shut up. Why would she offer to help these beasts? The tiger seemed to take Sorala's point of view and glared upon Ren suspiciously. What are you going on about? The tiger snarled, its ears flattening. Ren lowered herself to the ground and bowed her head, careful to avoid any shattered glass. We are here to serve you, she said. We praise the spirits. The tiger's lips curled back. Sorella's heart skipped a beat as it advanced towards Ren, its club tail sliding along C3's bed and tearing the cotton sheets. But it did not strike at her exposed neck. It instead glared down at her for a long moment, then hopped over her and entered the hallway. The other spirits, the pumpkin with antlers, a twig, a moss-covered lizard bird, a feathered armadillo turtle creature, a shadowy figure with five tails, and an eel-looking griffin, followed it soundlessly. What do we do? Sorala hissed in a dazed whisper. Ren got to her feet, biting her bottom lip. I'm not sure, she replied. My vision felt bad, but those spirits didn't seem too mean. Sorella stared at Ren incredulously. Several thoughts were swimming around her head like frenzied fish, each of them flashing danger. But she was too astonished to form words, her mouth moving pointlessly as she struggled to speak. Those spirits didn't look too friendly, Zin murmured. We have to warn the teachers. Yes, let's do that, Sorella said. She left the room with the twins behind her, ignoring C3, who sat on the ground in a daze. Do you think they're in range for telepathy? Ren asked. Zin shrugged. It's worth a try. Let's just be as loud as we can. Sorella glanced back at them for a moment, frowning at their focused faces. She had a suspicion throughout the year that the twins held silent conversations, but she didn't realize they were doing telepathy or that it was possible. After a moment, Zin and Ren looked up at each other, their eyes no longer so glazed. Kershid heard me, Zin said. And Fern heard me, Ren replied. So, they've been warned? Sorella asked, as they reached the door at the end of the hallway. Elevator. The platform came back from the ground level outside, and the railing in front of the door lowered once the stone was level with it. The three got on the elevator, just as Kershid's voice rang through the school. Students, stay exactly where you are. There is a potential threat in this school. Remain calm as we handle it. We will tell you when it is safe. In the meantime, all doors will be locked for your safety. If you are outdoors, please go to the theater. The door is unlocked. As soon as he finished speaking, the door behind the trio closed, right in C3's face as he hurried to catch up to them. They could hear a small yelp of surprise, but no matter how much he rattled the doorknob, it wouldn't open. We better get to the theater then, Ren mumbled. Ground floor, 
she ordered the elevator. Look, Sorala said, pointing. The group of seven spirits was wandering the courtyard near the pond. They seemed almost confused about what they were doing or where they were going. Movement caught her eye, and she quickly looked to see Kershid, Fern, and Aster exiting the library. The elevator reached the ground, and the teens got off. They hurried to the garden for cover, then peered around the sweet-scented bushes. Behind them, two students entered the theater rapidly, the door slamming after they were in. Cowards, Sorala thought, clenching her jaw. She focused her attention forward again, watching as Fern hurried to the spirits. Greetings, spirits, Fern said loudly, her voice echoing around the courtyard. May I ask what business you have here? The spirits remained silent as they watched her. Then, they simply turned and headed for the front of the school. Fern hurried after them, keeping several meters away. If you are looking for Hyaktu Saihan, he is not here, Fern went on briskly. May I show you to a waiting room? The spirits ignored her, coming to a stop outside of the southern building. Please answer me, Fern called. Otherwise, I will have to remove you from the school. What are you doing here? The tiger turned around to face Fern, sharp spikes appearing on its back as it bristled. You will not remove us from the school, it snarled. Then please tell me why you are here, Fern repeated. But the tiger had swiveled away from her and stared up at the sky. Sorala followed its gaze. She gasped lightly at what she saw. Purple lines appeared in the sky, zigzagging all around the school. Are those the protection enchantments? Zin asked Ren in a whisper. I think so, Ren replied quietly, her voice quavering. I only saw Dad put them up once, but they were a bunch of purple lines like that. They're taking down our defenses, Sorala muttered, pulling her wand from her yellow robe. Ren grabbed her arm quickly. Sorala, no! What, are we supposed to sit here and wait for the defenses to come down? Sorala snapped. You do realize they're probably lowering the protections for something else to come in, right? Yeah, something bigger, Zin said, emphasizing the word to Ren. Which could be from your vision. Ren shifted uneasily. But what can we do against the spirits? They're... She broke off at the commotion across from them. Fern had jumped forward, her tattoos and spiral necklace glowing a vibrant green. She had no use for a wand as she flicked her wrists, causing plants to rise out of the ground. How's she doing that? Sorala breathed. The plants grew quickly, slick vines spreading towards the spirits. But the spirits were faster. They jumped out of the way or used their claws to slash the vines. The tiger lunged towards Fern, diving between the plants that tried to grab it. We have to help her, Sorala growled, shoving Ren's hands off of her. No! But before any of them could move, a huge wave of air smashed into the tiger and sent it flying backwards. Kershid had arrived just behind Fern, his palms striking forward as he leaned into his low stance. Aster had joined them as well, holding up his wand at the ready, though he looked quite nervous judging by his stiff body. The large wind stopped as Kershid straightened up. The spirits were now lying on their sides in a grumbling dismay, after being thrown several meters away. The eel griffin had even landed in the pond and swam out. Leave the school, Kershid ordered the spirits. You are not welcome here. Attack, the tiger yowled, swinging its club tail. No, Sorala hissed, and she raced forward, wishing she had her knives on her. Nobody saw the three students approach, locked in battle by the time they arrived. Kershid was using Kung Fu to slam the creatures with airstrikes. Fern continued to use her plant powers, using vines like tentacles as she snatched spirits and threw them about. Aster waved his wand, using the water from the pond to hit the spirits. Even purple-eyed frog oils had hopped forward, the stone statues jumping at the spirits with fangs ready to chomp down on them. What do we do? Ren asked, holding her wand hesitantly in front of her. I don't want to fight the spirits. Then go hide, Sorala grumbled in annoyance. 
She plunged into the battle, commanding her magic like she never had before. Imprison the spirits in the stone! Make the ground sharp! Stab them! The earth listened to her orders. She trapped the stick spirit as the ground lifted around it, locking it in place. The stone then rose up in sharp spikes, poking the rest of the spirit's feet and sending them backwards. But just as she was making good progress, the twig trapped in the rock broke free, chunks of stone clattering to the ground. Sorella glared at the stick and growled, Trap this spirit! Do not let it go! The twig darted away from the earth as the ground reached for it again. Floating without a care in the world, the spirit laughed down at her with its long arms crossed in front of its skinny chest. I got this, Zin said, and he jumped forward with a card in his hand. Sorella watched in amazement as he made a triangle in the air in front of him, then flicked the card towards the spirit. A burst of fire shot forward, hitting the creature and setting it ablaze. The stick-looking spirit seemed to be made out of wood, as it burned quickly. Screaming in agony, it fell into the pond, putting out the fire at once. Or had the fire vanished before it hit the water? Sorala and Zin watched tentatively as it crawled out of the pond, looking angry. It stood up, and suddenly, it was much larger than before. Its form had changed into that of a giant walking tree. Hadn't Sorala seen a walking tree outside the school just months ago? Try that fire thing again, Sorala told Zin, backing up quickly as her mouth went dry. But Zin shook his head. I don't think that'll work, come on! Zin grabbed Sorala's arm and pulled her away. The two darted through screaming spirits and slimy plants and clunking frog oils and whooshing magic bursts until they slid to a stop beside Aster. What are you kids doing out here? He asked in a stern voice. Get in the library, hurry! Plants to me, Fern yowled loudly nearby. Before either of them could reply to Aster's words, there was a loud shatter of glass. Everyone looked towards the greenhouse, where the highly magical plants were now crawling from holes in the glass panels. The dancing trees seemed to glide across the ground, while the spiky plants hopped forward with difficulty. Soon enough, Fern had an army of plants at her back. Get inside! Aster growled, and he grabbed Sorala and Zin by the scruff of their robes and shoved them towards the western building. But we can help! Zin protested, holding out his box of magic cards. No, get inside! Wait, where's Ren? Zin yelped, glancing all around. Sorala's heart skipped a beat, and she returned her gaze to the thicket of yowling spirits and humans. She couldn't see Ren's purple hair anywhere. Ren! Sorala screamed. Ren, where are you? Zin closed his eyes beside her, clearly trying to reach out to her through his thoughts. After a moment, he opened his eyes, appearing more worried than before. Where is she? Sorella asked hastily. Tell me where she is! Zin shook his head. I don't know, he mumbled. She wasn't responding. No! Sorella hissed. She hurried forward, ignoring Aster as he tried to grab her. Lifting her wand, she screamed, Breen Ren to me! The ground shuddered violently, knocking down everyone but Sorala, including the plants. The battle was paused as the earth continued to shake. A large stone slid forward rapidly, coming to a sudden stop in front of Sorala. Ren was lying on it, shrieking in pain and writhing. A plant clung to the stone, shooting its red spikes in all directions, but somehow missing Ren beside it. Sorella lowered her wand and ended her magic, allowing the fight to continue. The spiky bramble hopped off to rejoin the chaos. Sorella bent down beside Ren, Zin appearing at her side. Help me lift her, Sorella growled. Dad! Ren shrieked, tears running down her freckled cheeks. No, Dad! Zin's whole body froze and their eyes widened. Ren, what are you seeing? What's happening to Dad? But Ren couldn't hear him as she continued to cry out in agony, her hands tense at her sides. Yes! Sorala and Zin glanced up in alarm at the triumphant scream. The spirits were gazing at the sky again, and Sorala realized that some of the purple lines had vanished. The creatures faced Fern and Kershid with menacing smiles. Keep flinging your magic at us, the tiger growled. We'll have the defenses down in no time. Fern replied by punching her hand forward, 
causing a large vine to wrap around the tiger's scruffy neck and drag it towards her. You are leaving, she bellowed. Fern lifted the tiger into the air, the vine circling several times as it picked up speed. She then threw the spirit over the school wall and into the forest beyond, the animal shrieking the entire way. However, the action seemed to take lots of energy from Fern, as the vines became smaller and her tattoos glowed weaker. Even the plant army seemed to slow down as their leader got worn out. We can't keep this up for long, Sorella thought. Why do they have to lock away all those other students? The more advanced students could be out here helping us. Ren, what's going on with Dad? Zin pressed, as Ren had stopped screaming at last. Ren was unusually pale as she sat up, her angular eyes dazed. That large thing! It was the ship! Oh, Zin, the ship's crashed! No! Zin choked out, tears springing to his eyes at once. Focus! Sorella snapped at them, though fear flooded her whole body at Ren's words. We don't know that he was on it, now do we? He could have jumped off or survived, or maybe it hasn't happened yet. Everything else has happened, Ren moaned, taking her glasses off to rub at her wet eyes. The shiny mirror, the magic, the transparent spirits, the cracked enchantments. Dad was on that ship, I know it. Focus, Sorella repeated, clenching her jaw. We have to help the teachers before they run out of energy. Come on. But neither of the twins moved. Sorala glared down at them, then rose to her feet and hurried to Kershid's side. He was now commanding a small tornado, which had managed to pick up the tree and the lizard bird. The spirits were flung from the school, just like the tiger. There were now four spirits remaining, making the fight more even at least. But Kershid was panting heavily, and Fern had stopped glowing. Aster was busy trying to get the twins to go inside. It's not an even fight at all, Sorala realized. The spirits glared at their foes, but did not attack again. The antlered pumpkin and the armadillo turtle stepped forward, while the five-tailed creature and the eel griffin moved behind them. The ones in the back looked up at the cracking defenses and began throwing bright balls of magic towards the sky. We are taking your protection away, growled the pumpkin in front. No, you aren't, snarled a voice beside Sorala. She glanced over to see Ren and Zin had joined her. Ren's face was a mask of fury, unlike anything Sorella had ever seen. Zin's lip was curled back as he held his box of magic cards in front of him. Without warning, Ren jumped into a square stance and punched the air, causing a large gust of wind to strike the two guards over. Sorella almost got tugged away by the wishing wind as it flew past her. Shoving her long hair out of her eyes, she nearly missed Ren's next move as she hopped onto an air slide, which carried her and Zin behind the spirits taking down the defenses. Zin whipped out another card, drew a square in the air with it, and ice flew at the shadowy figure. It screamed in agony and lost its concentration as the points hit its flank. Sorella stopped watching the twins and ran forward. She slashed her wand through the air, pointing it at the earth. Trap the spirits! She ordered the stone again. The earth listened to her commands, spikes shooting up beneath each spirit's arms and legs. They were now unable to move so easily, and therefore unable to break down the defenses. Throw them out of here! Sorella shouted. Hard earth and whooshing air combined to send the creatures flying away in a yowling mess. Sorala's magic propelled them up, while Ren's air blasts cast them over the wall. We did it! Aster yelled, dancing in the background. Sorala shot him a glare. You barely did anything, she growled. I bet the other students would have done more than you. Besides those cowards in the theater, that is. Hey, I did the water stuff. Aster protested. Before she could bicker any further, though, Ren and Zin were beside her once more. She glanced at the twins in concern. Was there anything else you saw in your vision, Ren? Zin asked his sister. No, Ren muttered. I don't know what happened to Dad. What? Kershid asked, limping over. His ship crashed, Zin told him. Ren saw it in her vision. Kershid tensed as he turned to Fern. 
We have to find him. We have to get these defenses back up, more likely, Fern said sternly. Come on, we'll find him after. Do you know where he was going? Wren asked, her voice desperate. He said he was getting his friend to help him with- I can't do this alone, Kershid, Fern hissed. Coming. And Kershid hurried to follow Fern into the entrance hall, leaving the three students alone with Aster. Silence surrounded them for a long moment, the dust still settling around the courtyard. I'm sure he's fine, Sorella finally murmured. Your dad is strong and powerful. Wren hugged her twin and closed her eyes. He has to be okay.